Good morning. Welcome to everybody God has gathered up here this day. And I'd wish you Merry Christmas as we are in the midst of the season of Christmas that began on Christmas Eve and goes all the way to January 5th when Epiphany begins. That's 12 days of Christmas, 12 days to let God's gift truly be taken in by our hearts and souls so that we receive all the light possible given to us by God through Jesus Christ. So happy 12 days of Christmas. We are glad to have everyone joining us online by live streaming. If you're finding our online service, please sign in to let us know you're sharing worship with us. So we are glad to have Carrie Vanovich as our worship host today. We're glad to have Mike and Mitch coming forward to lead our hymns. We give thanks for the music of Kit Ullman coming to us from the balcony. She'll soon be down here with us. And we're also blessed by the ministry of our tech crew in the balcony, our ushers and greeters and worship manager, Steve Strassman. Please see any of them if you need help with something throughout our service. And now let us enter into a spirit of worship together and find our opening hymn. Angels from the Realms of Glory is on page 220 in the hymnal. Please stand as you are able and let's sing together. from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth ye who say creation soaring now proclaim Messiah's birth come and worship come and worship worship Christ the newborn King shepherds in the Feel the gliding, watching their your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ on you. remain standing and join me in our call to worship. Praise the Lord from the highest heavens. Praise God, sun and the moon. Sing for joy, you shining stars. Praise the Lord from the deepest seas. Praise God, fire and hail. Leap with hope, snow and frost. Praise the Lord from the hearts of the faithful. Praise God, young and old. Laugh with mirth, wise and meek. Worship the Lord our God. Pay homage to the ruler of heaven and earth. And please join me for our opening prayer. God of holy mystery, it was no heavenly stranger that you came to save us. It was no happy accident that you led us from captivity. It was no careless gesture that showed us the ways of life and death. You are our light and our salvation. You alone are worthy of our worship and praise. In this season of Christmas, remind us once more of what you offer, a love born of endless searching, a connection born of deep longing, a future born of selfless sacrifice. 
Be with us now, for we are your people, and you are our God. Amen. We are glad to have our choir up here to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and I've just been recruited and have no idea how this will go. In the presence of one another and with our God, let us pray. God, this week we celebrate the coming of your Son and his light into our lives. We give thanks that you come within him to have a close relationship with us that means you experience all the parts of our earthly lives by coming to earth where your word has been made flesh and Jesus dwells among us. Thank you for the gift you give us of your love, your care, and your presence that is with us to strengthen us whatever we face in our earthly lives. We ask now in this time of prayer that you provide your strength and healing to those who need it most. We ask that you shed light on the paths of those who struggle with darkness and sometimes lose their way. We give thanks for the sounds of little ones in our midst that remind us you continue to send new life into your world. And we receive that, are entrusted with its care, and we walk the journey as a faith community of all ages, knowing that we have much to celebrate here in this place with the ministry you give us to share. Thank you, Lord, for the gift you give us of guidance through your Son guidance for us as individuals and guidance as a faith community. This day we turn our hearts to you 
and we lift everything up in our hearts that has not yet been put into words. We can speak directly to your ear from our hearts. Thank you for the gift you give us of that opportunity to be surrounded by your presence here in this place and to turn our hearts with time to breathe to you. This day, may we also together with our lips lift up the words of prayer your son taught us as we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We are glad to have some time now for our youth and young adults to share with us the Los Posadas drama. Carrie is part of the drama, as is Alex Green, Jenny Tijeski, Anders Tesh, Katie Kickert, and somewhere we have Kevin Neitzel. We'll trust that. In the Hispanic tradition of Latin American countries, especially in Mexico, one of the oldest celebrations is Las Posadas. It was created by the Augustinian Father Diego de Soria about 1587 to introduce Christianity to the New World. And now it is revised by United Methodists as a liturgy for worship. It is a preparation for and anticipation of the birth of the Savior, commemorating the nine months when Mary carried the infant Jesus in her womb and emphasizing his coming again and the need of all persons for repentance and God's mercy. Today we enact a Los Posadas drama to recognize that the journey of the Holy Family continued after Jesus' birth. Our drama connects us to today's gospel lesson that tells us of the Holy Family's flight to Egypt to escape danger after Jesus' birth. Listen, I'm knocking at the door. Uh, knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you. And you with me. Who will give lodging to these pilgrims who are weary of traveling the roads? We have come exhausted from Nazareth. I'm a carpenter by the name of Joseph. In the name of the heavens, I beg you for lodging. My beloved wife can no longer travel. Although you tell us that you are weary, we do not give lodging to strangers. We don't care what your name is, let us sleep. We are telling you that we will not let you enter. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. And who are the children of God? All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. To what does the Spirit of God guide us? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But how will we know that we love the Lord and have faith? What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or a sister is naked and lacks daily food and no one says to them, or if one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. 
Lodging we will give you with much happiness. Enter, good Joseph. Enter with Mary. Enter, holy pilgrims. Receive this corner, not of this humble abode, but of our hearts. Let us pray. God, God all-powerful, powerful, grant, grant that, that we, we may rid ourselves of the works of darkness, of darkness and that, that we may invest ourselves in the works of light, in this life to which your Son, Jesus Christ, with great humility came to visit us. As we follow him together, may we each work diligently on shaping our lives closer to his, and strive each day to shape the world we live in into all God hopes for creation. Amen. If you would please stand as you are able and join us in singing Away in a Manger, hymn 217, verses 1 and 3. scripture reading. Please be seated. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 2 verses 13 through 23. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to that time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is one of those scripture stories that first makes us wonder if the wise men were really so wise. They may have been brilliant astrologers when it came to tracking the stars, but it was a bit of a political snaf snafu when they made a request of King Herod to direct them to the new king because that unleashed his reaction of jealousy. And when Herod realized the wise men hadn't come back to tell him that they'd found the new king, his anger and anxiety just boiled over. 
the idea of a new king threatening his power became violence and cost the lives of innocent children in his anger boiling over. Um, this is Leon Cognet's interpretation of the massacre of the innocents that it was painted in 1842. So this has been with us, as we know, since biblical times and interpreted in many different ways and understood in many different ways throughout time. Because this is one of those biblical stories that make us cringe that God allowed this to happen. But it also reminds us that it wasn't God perpetuating such violence. It was a human being. It was King Herod. And God was salvaging the situation in any way possible. Because God had watched over the Holy Family throughout their difficult journey from those first angels who came to announce the birth of Jesus or the to expect Jesus to Mary and Joseph and then getting Mary and Joseph safely from Nazareth, Nazareth to Bethlehem, the 90-mile journey, finding them shelter along the way, helping people see the light so that they too could help celebrate the vulnerable baby when he was born. And then there's a brief period in the story when Mary and Joseph are safe in Bethlehem. And then if we are reading this Matthew, Matthew uh, gospel story, we have the profound human flaws of the world catching up with them and Herod's anger and anxiety unleash violence. And so the journey of the Holy Family continued. When we look at Jesus' whole life from beginning to end, we see that it's shaped by the need to respond to the failings of humanity. Jesus responded throughout his life to the sins of human beings. And we just spent the Advent season preparing for his birth. Now that he's arrived, our Savior meets us here in this season of Christmas. And we celebrate his birth with our grateful response to God. But if we accept him as our Savior, we must also accept the challenge that our work begins whenever this Bethlehem scene plays out in the world that we're reading about today. Theologian and preacher Howard Thurman, who was active in the civil rights movement in 1960s, put it this way. When the song of the angels is stilled and the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. The work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to make peace among people, and to make music in the heart. Friends, as we live on into 2020, the new decade, we have a choice to make about how we will live in the world as God's people. If we are among those who for right now feel that we are blessed by God, how will we minister to those who aren't feeling so blessed and are overwhelmed by feeling vulnerable right now? Because there are people all around us in our world who are lost and broken and hungry and imprisoned and helpless for a time. There are those who have had their lives torn apart by the circumstances of our world and those for whom there is no experience of peace on earth and those who can no longer hear the music of their hearts over the violence of their lives. And that could become any of us at any time. As we consider the Los Posadas drama enacted for us today, we saw that there were people who felt safe on the inside 
and then were afraid to let anybody else in. Anybody they didn't know, anybody they couldn't decide whether they should trust or not. The insiders. And they were challenged to realize that what they had become accustomed to was, was more than anybody on the outside had. They had a place to be. They had safety. And then the light came on for them and they began to see that maybe they had enough to share. And the way to keep the light going and growing would come through sharing it. And that sharing that light and space was the most important thing they could do. And in that, they welcomed Jesus Christ, parents and then baby, into that sharing and all the ways that that would make a difference in their lives. The work of Christmas is about realizing that God is ready to provide all the world needs. We just need to work out how to let God work through us to share what we have, to care for others, and to respond to the needs of those who are most vulnerable. The short of it is to offer the care of Christ to one another, the same care Christ is always ready to offer us. And that's not a new call on our hearts, but one that continues throughout our journey of faith. And I give thanks for all the ways we did this throughout 2019 as a congregation. When I think of the ways we offered the care of Christ, I think of things like our visitation ministry and the mission trip in June and Second Harvest Mobile Food Pantry once a month the playground movement lunches, 50-plus oh, ministry reading to children who are in the Head Start classrooms, and our own Sunday school and Epic Kids programs, the youth packing care packages for college students and everybody who's out into the world somewhere, visiting nursing homes, people making cards and blankets and prayer shawls and hosting breakfast with Santa and everybody responding to community needs through the giving tree as we have throughout this past month. And I think of our response to disasters around the world through the United Methodist Committee on Relief and the way we did all we could to support the work of the Salvation Army throughout this past year, especially over the Christmas holiday. And then there's the Compassion Fund that's right here at Trinity providing response to emergencies as they arrive, arise. And other ways that we are in ministry to the community around us that are too countless to name. And when I think of all of those, hope for humanity comes into my mind because there are so many different things that we can do to make a difference in the lives of people around us. And I know that we are still looking for ways to do the work of Christmas between us and that God is always willing to guide us. We need to remember that the work of Christmas will go on. And the question for us in the new year is, what will God call us to do next? What shape and form will our ministry take? Who will, will it be to? And are we listening well to God's call on all of our hearts? And we need to take time to talk about that together so that everything everybody hears God calling on your hearts gets put together and we figure out how we work together to respond to God's call on our hearts and on our lives and on our congregation. Pretty soon we're going to put away all the Christmas decorations They'll all be packed up if you haven't already. But the work of Christmas goes on. Let's remember, though, friends, that even God rested one day, and we need to put that in the mix of these 12 days of Christmas to prepare us for the work of Christmas to go on throughout this year ahead, to go on as God's people on this earth, to go on as people who have met Christ and seen his light and are ready to follow that light wherever it takes us, whoever God calls us to offer it to.
Amen. Amen. Let's find together a song that reminds us of all the different calls God places on our hearts and ways we can respond. Star Child is on 2095 in your black hymnal. Please stand as you are able to sing together. remain standing and we will sing our final hymn there's a song in the air hymn number 249 Sometimes it's hard to snuff out the light of Christ. That's not always true, though. We proved that Christmas Eve, right? Yes.
Well done. Tricky. All right. Friends, as we go from this place, may we follow the light of Christ and let that burn brightly in our hearts. For we have met him this Christmas season, and we must carry him on in our hearts to do the work of Christmas that God calls us to. Amen. Thank you.